everything is spinning. All things are in motion and all things are spinning. Spin is everywhere. Spin is in everything you see. Spin is what makes an atom an atom. Spin is what makes the earth go round. Everything has rotation and spin, which is accepted in science, but it's not explained. To describe why it's spinning and why that spin is so important to keep everything in the dynamic system that it is, that's putting spin back into the equations because spin is fundamentally at the foundation of why everything works the way it works. We are reaching a point in our evolution in humanity where we have to transcend our current understanding of the physics of the universe and reach a new level, a unified level of physics where we have a whole view, a holistic view, a complete view of the physics of the universe that includes the fundamental forces of nature instead of fighting nature which results in most of the destruction that we see around us on the planet. It's necessary for us to come together on some kind of unified understanding of all of the structures that we see in our universe and all of the dynamics that we see in nature. And the reason it's so fundamental for us to have that is because we're a part of that cycle. We're not separate. One of the problems in physics is relativity describes big things and quantum mechanics describes small things and we've yet to come up with a consistent theory that yields a connection between them both. So what we're looking at in the unified field theory is to better describe what these forces are, what their origin are in terms of the structure of the space-time manifold. So if this comes out we have a way to unify the big with the small. When quantum mechanics started gaining fame, instead of using intuition and common sense and visualization of the natural world, they went to mathematics. And in describing physical reality in terms of mathematics, they lost a lot. Our physics has become very complex, very obscure. And most of the complexity that occurs in quantum theory and relativistic physics and so on are the result of us putting patches upon patches upon patches to make the theory match what we observe. And then they get more and more complex, more and more obscure, more and more difficult to work with, and they produce less and less valuable application to the advancements of humanity because they're obscure and too complex and most likely incorrect. When you just change a fundamental aspect of a theory and make it correct, like Copernicus thinking that our solar system may not be geocentric but heliocentric with the sun at the center, then everything becomes simple and beautiful again. And I believe that by giving an appropriate accounting of the spin of all things, which I call helicocentric, driven by a torque which describes the fundamental forces of spin, we actually unlock that simple change in our physics that brings us to a whole new level of physics, which is beautiful and simple and can bring us to a whole new way of existing and interacting with the universe. We're looking at a theoretical and experimental work that displays and shows this intimacy of connection, that we are all interconnected. That we are all interconnected.
We are all part of the same fabric. We're all part of the same geometry. Our molecules, the cosmos, everything, from very, very small to very, very large. We're all fundamentally made of the same thing as anything else in the universe. We're all made of stardust. All of those atoms and particles that come together to make my being or your being or a rock or a tree initially came from a star. It's like a fractal. Fractal, you can have the same geometry, but the geometry will go very, very small and still have the same geometry. Or you can take the geometry and go very, very large. It's the same fundamental geometry. And these fractal concepts and geometric concepts of nature produce these higher level of understanding and higher level of mathematics in the description of the physics of creation. Every atom can be divided in smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. We have now produced particles that are billions of times smaller than the atom itself. And so we can actually talk about infinite divisions of the vacuum itself. The vacuum that binds all particles and any body together doesn't merely stop at the boundary of that body, but it extends into the depths of the universe and it has influence on every other body that it comes into contact with. The vacuum is superconductive, superfluid media in which the structure of it permits information to move across infinite amount of scales instantaneously. The ancient ones always had this idea as above, so below. Their common sense, their everyday experience could be interpreted as this is a reflection of what's very, very small and a reflection of what's very, very large. And so no two things are truly separate. My approach to eventually advanced physics was through the study of ancient texts and ancient civilization all around the world and finding correlations to already present advanced physics concepts and then moving forward with these concepts and the knowledge of ancient civilization to produce a new level of physics that is more complete and unified. The beauty of a better model is that it opens up doors that the old model can't see. This new model of physics really is built on the shoulders of giants. It's built on the shoulders of, of Newton, of Einstein, of Bohr, and I took what was available and looked into it really deeply and I found the good in it and then I found as well what was missing. All these theories are missing a fundamental source for the spin of all things, meaning none of these theories explain why the electrons spin, why the planets spin, why the galaxies spin, or even why our solar system is spinning. There, there's a platitude going around that says, what makes the world go around? And some people will answer, money. His answer will be torque, uh, Coriolis effect, energy to make it spin. The same force that holds all things together also drives them into motion. And this fundamental spin to things allows energy to move freely throughout all bodies in, in the universe or in any system. What we're saying in this new theory is that there is a fundamental force of angular momentum in the space-time manifold itself, in the vacuum itself, that forces everything to spin. And that force is a torque term that we've added to Einstein field equations. It says that space-time doesn't just curve, but it twists, it curls at the same time. And that the force that forces space-time to curl is a torque that's embedded in the structure of space-time itself. And that, that everything spins as a result of that force being present in the space-time manifold. And so it is literally Einstein with a twist. A black hole is thought in current physics to be a point that 
absorbs all electromagnetic radiation, a point in which the density is so high that even light cannot escape it. In my theory, a black hole looks more like a star, an object that is absorbing information but is as well radiating information that is absorbing energy and radiating energy in a coherent matter, in an organized matter. Everything from the universe to quarks and everything in between can be characterized as black holes or singularities of different sizes, different masses, and different uh, rotation rates. So that what we have for the universe is a fractal series that goes from the smallest things we know of to the largest things we know of that are all the same thing, a black hole or a singularity. We're living in different scale black holes. In fact, everything is a different scale black hole from subatomic particles to planetary systems to stars and galaxies and quasars and universes are embedded black holes. Black holes in this sense is a larger, more generalized picture of a black hole where black hole is written a uh, whole W-H-O-L-E instead of um, a whole, it's the whole. If you think of the whole universe as a fractal series of singularities, then there's a part inside what's called the event horizon, a point where the, the event horizon defined as where light is pulled into a closed orbit, so that that's why they call them black holes. The light goes in, it orbits the event horizon, and you never see it come out again, so it's a black hole. Inside that event horizon, all the clocks are stopped or running backwards, and therefore all the information of all time is available within the event horizon. And if you think about the topology of all this, there's only one event horizon. And if everything's made out of the same kind of singularity, then there's really only one thing in the universe. It's just all folded up a lot into trees and dolphins and honeybees and humans and everything else. But we're all made out of the same stuff. And if all the information is available in the event horizon, then all the information of the whole universe is available from every point. As I show in this model, it has a singularity in the middle that produces, and the torque of space-time and the Coriolis forces produces these vertices that extends from the singularity down and up and then it has these uh, forces because of its centrifugal forces that pushes the information out and allow and then when the information radiates far enough then eventually it gets caught by the gravitational field of the black hole again and falls back in and it produces this double torus function that I describe in my work. And that fundamental double torus feedback of space-time, I believe, is the source of the information network that produces our universe. The technologies that becomes possible when you understand the fundamental forces of the spin of all things is that you can tap into that force, you can tap into that fundamental spin and thus you're getting energy out of it. If that energy is in the vacuum everywhere, then it's available everywhere. You just gotta figure out how the vacuum works so that you can tap into it and now you have a source of energy anywhere you are because there's vacuum everywhere. And if you just get the tiniest amount, it makes oil and every other power source you've ever thought of obsolete then we would have a source of energy that could really transform our society and allow us to work with the forces of nature in a much more coherent way rather than destroying the forces of nature to generate energy which is ultimately going to bring our downfall. And just tap into the fundamental spin that spins the earth in the first place, that spins the sun in the first place, that spins the galaxy in the first place and just tap into the source of that force.
On a personal level, the benefit from understanding this new level of physics is that you start to understand more fundamentally how you got there. What is reality? How, did, how does reality respond to your experience? And what is the fundamental principles of the feedback between your observation and your interpretation and how is the universe responding to that? It's the fundamental dynamics of everything from the most infinitely small level to the most infinitely large, and including us as human beings. So it's how we interact with the universe is, is a crucial part of the theory. And you go inside and you connect through your stillness to all other points. I mean, that's what the Buddha called enlightenment. And yet it can be, it can be summed up in an equation. I mean, that's really, that's fascinating. And if all the information is available in the event horizon, then all the information of the whole universe is available from every point. And we just have to...